Me. Ha! I tricked you. So, oh, I didn't even check anything. Oh, I've got to turn the amp on. Hang on a second. Look, I've just got these guitars back. I don't know if you can see this. This is a Steinberger designed by Ned Steinberger, who's very good friends with Lou Reed. And this is Lou Reed's guitar that's come back. I've had two of them come back recently for a little bit, you know, polish the frets, new strings, put everything on. This one had a buzz on it. And it was like, drive it, like, I'd get rid of it. I, you know, I fiddled with the trans trim. These fuckers, they're a nightmare, but they're great fun too. I mean, it depends, see, if you look at things as work, like setting up tremolos, yeah, they're a lot of work. And when you're on the road and you've got to do it like your boss wants it now and like, and it, it's all over the place, that's not a good thing to have, have to deal with. So I always used to prepare every, I always used to set everything up way before so that I didn't have any surprises on the road. But anyway, so guitar came back, buzz inside, can't find it, bugger, what is it? I know what it'd be, see the battery compartment on the back was taped on, I was like, oh that's what it is, the tape's got, you know, it's a plastic tape, it's loosened up, just enough, the strings are vibrating, there's sympathetic resonance, and boo, you, you'll be surprised what fucking resonates on guitars. Anyway, I was going to do a joke about Trent Reznor then, and resonating, but then I just held back, I, did, I thought, why, why even bother? Trent, what's Trent Reznor done for me? Nothing. Oh, done to me for that fact. I'll tell you what he's done to me. He's affected me emotionally with his music. I've not met the man yet. Anyway, so the guitar comes back. I, no, take the bet. I start like an idiot making new, because I take the tape off. Obviously the little, you know, plunger things, you know, they've long gone, so we think. Right. So I start making some new things for the battery compartment. Then something went, like, I always have these voices in my head. I think it's my dad a lot of the time. My dad goes, Oi, Stewie, why don't you try the guitar with a... If you think the battery compartment is a vibrating force and that's what's causing the problem, you've now taken it off. You can eliminate that. So if you play it... Fuck me, there's the buzz. It's still there. Exactly, Dad. If you can eliminate things, one thing... This is another thing with Lou Reed. We had to do everything, one thing at a time. Don't change two things in a pedal chain, ever. Ever don't change any one thing at a time. One guitar versus is this guitar better than that one? I like that one's pick up on the front. You know, this is me and Lou all the time, point by point along this chain. One thing at a time. Is that better or worse? Definitely better. Good. We're going in the right. No, that's horrible. Go back. Easy. It's the simplest thing in the world, but no one gets this. It's just this is Lou Reed logic. Lou Reed said to me, he said to me. Two things, the first thing Lou Reed ever said to me is, I hear you're a big fan of colour coding, which I am. And he went, me too, welcome aboard. That's the first thing Lou Reed ever said to me, big fan of colour coding, organisation, doing it in a simple way that dyslexics know. I didn't know at the time that Lou was a dyslexic. And I'm dyslexic. We've, I, I've got a story about that, how that came out, and it really freaked him out. Anyway, so still haven't got the buzz, have we? So you thought I'd forgotten? No. Right, so, obviously it's not that. I am noodled around with the, tr the trans trim, you know, play I did a lot of different things. I was like, I kept thinking I got it. Oh, there, it sounds good. I'd lean forward or I'd noticed it where I started moving the guitar. Oh, you lean forward and it's worse. And if you put it over there, it's a different note. And, you know, so, okay, there's something obviously loose in here. Fuck it, I've got to open it up and I don't really want to go in there. There could be spiders in there, who the fuck knows? Anyway. I do, I open it up, and to my surprise, I was like, oh wow, this is a beautiful design, I really love it. Anyway, so, I, I, but I notice it's, because it's, these are EMG pickups, that means they're active, that's why there's a battery compartment. Active pickups need a battery, for all you who don't know. Um, see, I think I could teach people, little, things that I just think are just, everyone knows that, some people don't. Anyway, they don't really want to know it, they don't give a shit. So... What am I going to do? Um, where was I? So, I open it up, looks beautiful. I know there's loads of cables because it's active. I am the Prince of Velcro. Thomas Nordegg is the King of Velcro. And he taught me very well. Anyway, so... Um, where am I going with this? So, we're getting, what do I do? I get Velcro out. I lay Velcro. I always put the fuzzy down. Imagine if you're walking on a, on a carpet. 
I want it to feel nice, not like those spiky, you know, not like walking on nails. The spiky stuff is like walking on nails. I always do fuzzy, like I'm walking on a nice grass or a nice, something nice and soft, comfortable, like, you know, soft. And then you put the, and that's how it locks, you, you know, but, and that way you're putting the, the pins, the more pressure you put on the pins into the fuzzy, it's just, to me, it's a win-win, but lots of people do it the other way. Everyone's got their reasons. No one's right or wrong. I'm not saying, you know, when I get on my thing, I always presume that I'm right. But I tell you what, I learned Thomas Nordic, for example. I've learned so much from other people when I got into their situation and I went, oh, I wouldn't have done that. And then you, a little while later, you go, you know, that's really clever, actually. Like, my immediate reaction is like, oh, it's different, therefore I don't like it. And then when I look, I go, and then I, I usually go over and meet the tech and go, dude, how did you come up with that? And they tell me, and I'm like, that's fucking genius. And I love it when some, I love when I learn from another tech. When I get, you know, to glean more knowledge, it's, it's so much fun. Yet there's a lot of, you know, um, com not camaraderie, there is camaraderie among guitar techs, but there's also a lot of competition, particularly with the younger guys. Um, but then I'm all got a whole, you know, it, in my generation, blah, blah. No, I'm not going to do that whole shit. Anyway, let's have a listen to this guitar. I bet it won't work now. I've done that video. I set the guitar up. I've set myself up for failure, and Lou Reed will do it to me. I'm telling you, he will. Don't, Lou. Please don't do it. Ah, <laughs> oh, we've got something. Oh, I haven't got my special pet. Oh, yeah, I've got it over there. Hang on, guys, I'm now shot. I'm tripping over cables. You never think I was a fucking this great guitar tech. <laughs> I can I can fucking pirouette right around the stage when we've dressed it all. But, I, you know, I, no one does it at home. No techs do what we do on the road. It's ridiculous. Anyway, so what we got? Let's see if we can get this to work. I, I'm going to put it down a little bit so you can see the guitar. Because it's all about this little guitar. I don't know what pickups I'm on yet. Oh, I want that one, definitely. Oh, I like it. I like when a, a tone control does that. Can you hear? I don't know if the phone's going to pick that up, but I like that. Now let's have a check out and see. I don't care about it being loud. What I care about is when you go. I got to hear it ring out nice in D. I really like it when it's quiet. So when it's nice and quiet like that. And I want to go nicely from F 
to D. I've grown up a lot like you do. I've grown up like my dad. All the best bits though. There's not that much that's bad, but the bad is bad. So if I can get a nice F. And then I know I've got an ecstasy. They call it ecstasy. Anyway, so once I've got that, I know that I'm on Lurie's guitar, but there's got to be... I haven't got... Uh, um, Oh, the thing's not kicking in now. Oh, hang on a minute. There we go. See these buttons, you, you can knock them off really easy. That's on now, that's off. Is this picking it up? I don't think it is. I mean, I can hear this in the room, but I don't think it is. So, the other thing is, I put that on high power, but you know what I do? I back off the tone control and now I can make really to back it all the way down because that's just ridiculous. I don't like these buttons, I keep turning them on and off without knowing it. That's why Lou stopped playing this, I can tell, I'm feeling it now. Yeah, I love that guitar, it sounds great, but I kept knocking the buttons off, and all of a sudden, if, he, if you knock them all off. Right, take that one off. That's off, there you go. Now, that's Lou Reed's worst nightmare. I don't know what's going on. There's no noise. I can't make it loud. If I can't make it loud, I can't destroy this audience. If they don't destroy, if I don't destroy and control them, they will control me. That's Lou Reed's biggest fear right there. And that's why this didn't get played anymore. Anyway, this has been me trying to show you stuff, but I don't think the phone's going to prick it up. I'll, I'll look into it. Anyway, bye for now. Oh, wow, it's only 13. Great. I could do some more then, couldn't I? No, no, leave it at that. Otherwise they won't watch you.